very well. Goodbye. Different ones are different, really, because some of them are heavily putted in and some of them are really loosely fitted. So, I mean, they're all secure and everything, but over the years, obviously, the putty disintegrates and some of them held in really firmly and some of them aren't. So. My name's Jamie Moore. Um, I run a company called Reclesia Limited. Um, we are a specialist contractor. Uh, we restore uh, historic buildings um, and the key uh, parts of the business are stone masonry and stained glass. The stained glass in the Town Hall extension um, is by uh, an artist called uh, Kruger Gray. The windows are signed by him and dated. Uh, 1937. Um, he was a coin designer. He designed most of the coins tail sides for the uh, Commonwealth coins. Um, the Shakespeare window um, is by uh, a maker called Robert Anning Bell. Um, the window was dedicated to Leo Grindon who was a uh, Manchester botanist um, and it was dedicated to him by his wife uh, Rosa Grindon um, and there is a dedication running through the, the window that isn't all that visible from the floor, um, but it is there, um, her name and his name, um, and the window dedicated in, in his memory. Uh, the removal of the windows um, was fairly straightforward really. Um, they're all uh, fixed into bronze frames um, and the glass is fitted into the windows uh, using a, a bronze bead, um, which uh, was removed um, and then the windows taken out one by one. Uh, they were all recorded uh, before anything was touched. Uh, there was a fairly detailed uh, conservation plan drawn up uh, detailing uh, our every last move with the windows um, as they came out uh, one by one. Um, and the um, windows were then carefully transported back here to the workshop um, section by section. There were quite a lot of problems um, with uh, the vast majority of the windows, um, a lot of them um, the, uh, were leaking uh, because the lead had bowed and moved out of shape. Um, there were a lot of breaks in the glass, um, mainly due to time rather than anything like vandalism, which we see quite regularly with stained glass. And they are terrifically dirty. Um, they've never been cleaned um, in the entire time that they've been in the building. Um, so the only thing we, we could do really was to take them out um, and treat them properly in a, in a conservation environment. If you work your way around the studio, you'll see the process that we've, we've put together out there, which is, is specifically designed to deal with the problems that we found with these windows. So what Neil's doing here um, is working on one of the panels from the Shakespeare window in the central library. Um, he's doing a, a cleaning exercise as he's stripping the window down. Um, so he's, any sort of breaks and things like that, he's marking up on the rubbing. Um, and each piece is being very, very carefully cleaned um, using um, cotton wool buds um, which are rolled across just to take the excess detritus off. We're not scrubbing them clean. Um, we're being very, very gentle. So what Sarah's got here is one of the more, I'd say one of the most badly damaged panels um, from the Shakespeare window. Um, there's quite a few broken sections in it. Um, again, they'll be bonded back together again. And there are pieces in this which are so badly broken, there's nothing we can do with them. Um, there's been some fairly poor previous repair work to them. Cat's doing on the light bench. Um, there are two processes going on here. Um, there's the repair of the broken sections of glass, and there's the replacement of the sections of glass that are either missing or too badly broken to do um, any proper repair with. The section that she's working on at the moment um, is a piece of garment um, from the window that we saw Sarah stripping earlier. Um, we we'll tend to do more than one painting of each section. Um, the way that these turn out once they're kiln fired um, can, be, can be quite different uh, sometimes. Um, so it's useful to do, to do more than one quite often. The glass has been matched exactly to the colour of the original piece of glass. Alice is taking a rubbing of one of the Shakespeare panels. Um, this is a very simple but very, very effective way of recording the layout of the lead around the glass. This means that we've got a permanent record of exactly how the panel was laid out. Um, 
These rubbings are used to mark up all of the issues with the panels, so we've got a permanent conservation record of exactly what repair work we've done. So what Garth is doing here is the, is the messiest part of the process, really. He's stripping down the glass from the lead. Um, you can see the tiny little fragments that are coming out are all of the excess cement, the old cement, which has gone hard. And Garth's just removing that from the very edges of the glass using a scalpel. So this is the rebuilding process. Um, the original glass is put back into the H-section lead cames. Um, the cames are all the same size as the original um, and they're carefully rebuilt piece by piece in exactly the same configuration as the original panels. So what Mike's doing in here is pushing leaded light cement in between the glass and the lead. The weather weatherproofs them, um, it seals them properly, um, it keeps them all together, gives them structure um, and it's, um, it's what turns the lead from its natural silver colour down to black. Um, they're polished as well afterwards, which is, um, is, is what gives them that final black finish. The biggest challenge with a, with a project like this um, is quantity. Um, it's not very often um, that a project comes along where there are 400 panels of glass that require specialist conservation work. Um, the process, um, in terms of uh, timescale, um, we estimated at uh, nine months. There's a huge amount of labour that goes into these windows. Um, there's no mechanical process. Um, there's nothing you can do to rush the process. And you will discover problems once the windows are back at the studio that you just couldn't see when they were, they were up. The project has been um, a very, very exciting one for us. Um, it's not often that projects come along of this size. Um, and uh, for a company like us, it's given us a brilliant opportunity um, to provide some, some very, very specialist training um, 